This is Tomo News for Monday, November 20th. North Korean defector's stomach full of nasty parasites. The contents of a recent North Korean defector's stomach paint a hopeless picture of what life is really like inside the hermit kingdom. The North Korean border guard was shot several times while fleeing across the demilitarized zone to South Korea last week. Medical staff treating the defector say they found numerous parasites inside his body. Several of these were removed from his digestive tract, including one 27-centimeter long roundworm. They were likely caused by farming practices in the north where human excrement is used for fertilizer due to a lack of chemical fertilizer. Known as night soil, this practice is notorious for spreading parasites and disease. And that god-awful practice was championed by this guy. And he's full of it. Very full. Heaven has a new beekeeper. An Ohio woman whose post went viral for her unique maternity shoot has suffered a heartbreaking tragedy. Last August, beekeeper Emily Mueller celebrated her pregnancy by posing with 20,000 live bees on her baby bump. Just days before her due date, the mom of three realized her baby had not been moving around. Her contractions also felt strange and different. Feeling uneasy, Mueller and her husband went to the hospital, where an ultrasound revealed that the baby had no heartbeat and had passed on. <laughs> Mueller delivered her stillborn son the next day, naming him Emerson Jacob. She decided to send the placenta for testing to hopefully find out what went wrong, but strongly suspects that the baby died from a blood clotting issue that has previously caused miscarriages in her family. A small device called a cuddle cot allowed the Mullers to spend more time with their little beekeeper before finally saying goodbye. Eyes on the road. An 18-year-old cheerleader has died after a distracted driver crashed into her car in Arlington, Texas. Alexis Butler was backing out of a friend's driveway on November 10th when a pickup truck smashed into the passenger side of her Toyota Camry. The impact pushed the car onto a nearby grassy area and injured Butler, who died in the hospital a week later. The pickup hit a fence and a light pole, but the driver was not injured. He admitted he was looking down at the time of the crash and was doing a breathalyzer test on a court-ordered ignition interlock device. The anti-DWI device measures driver's blood alcohol concentration and only allows a vehicle to start if they pass the test. Drivers do need to do retests at periodic times throughout the ride, but while everyone else pulls over, the 31-year-old oddly chose to do it while his car was still moving. Police say the man wasn't intoxicated during the crash and has yet to be charged with anything. Search for missing Argentine sub hampered by weather. It's a race against time as a multinational task force searches for a missing Argentinian submarine. The search for an Argentine naval submarine that went missing with 44 crew members is being hampered by bad weather. The ARA San Juan was returning on a routine mission from the Tierra del Fuego archipelago to its home base in Mar del Plata. It was last spotted on Wednesday in the San Jorge Gulf. Seven failed satellite calls were detected on Saturday morning. However, the Argentine Defense Ministry said it could not confirm the attempts came from the ARA San Juan. The San Juan is a 65-meter-long TR-1700 submarine powered by four diesel engines and one electric engine. The Argentine Navy says the missing sub has enough oxygen, food and water to last for at least two weeks. Interstellar message sent to nearby exoplanet. Hello, is anyone out there? GJ273, a red dwarf, also called Leuton's star, is galactically right around the corner at a mere 12.36 light years away from Mother Earth. Scientists and artists beamed a message to the GJ273 system last month to see if any aliens are listening. The message will only take about a dozen years to arrive. The radio signal included music and math lessons from us to them and was designed for aliens to respond. Some critics, like Stephen Hawking, worry that actively trying to contact E.T. could alert advanced hostile or resource-seeking aliens, which could have dire consequences for our planet. Don't worry, we'll destroy ourselves first before any dirty alien will get a chance to. But on the bright side, if in 25 years we hear an actual response, wouldn't that be something?